on, everybody. Welcome to First Take. Thank you for being with us. As you already heard, Stephen A. Smith, Keyshawn Johnson on this Tuesday. Good morning, gentlemen. How we doing? What's happening, Molly? You look lonely in that studio by yourself. You know, you know she does look lonely. Molly, I just want to say, you know, I'm good all I know by myself. Be, I know this is going to be a very, very difficult day for you because I'm not Bye. there. But I am there tomorrow. I'll be back. Oh, You'll be great. fine. Great. You'll be fine. You'll make it through the day. I'm just be tough. Don't I'm be tough. by myself, but you, but you but guys make, make, make me better. Okay. Uh, are those silk, are those, uh, what, 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 what's that outfit, Molly? Is those silk, is those, is those red silk box. pajamas? Is those red yes. silk pajamas you got on, Molly? Is that what that oh, is? This is this is actually cute. The pants. Uh, I can't show okay. you guys right, right. now. I it's mean, cool. there are pajamas. I mean, that it's like a old. It's like a oldie but goodie. You know that kind of thing. I'm saving the new. I just want to know if you was coming to work in your pajamas. for Phoenix. No, I'm, I'm not just coming to work in my pajamas. Keyshawn, I was just asking. I just asked a question, Keyshawn. I wonder if she wasn't working with her pajamas. Like, that's all who I'm asking. That's who all I'm asking. Sli who that's sleeps what I'm in things like this, first of all? I'm like, just come saying. on. I just want to know if you got your lunch box with you. Yeah, you I do have my box. Keyshawn, the, full disclosure, this morning I've kid. already had my Greek yogurt overnight oats, and I've already had sea bass and butternut squash and spinach, and it's like 8 o'clock in the morning. I know. Oh, what do you want right, from me? I'm hungry let's, today. Let's move. We'll have right. to give her As a break at some point. <laughs> <laughs> As for football, let's do that. The Niners were no stranger to new faces at quarterback this season. Trey Lance, Jimmy G, then Brock Purdy. Both Lance and Jimmy G went down and then Purdy tore the UCL in his right elbow in the NFC Championship game. And the quarterback is seeking second medical opinions about whether he needs surgery which the 49ers are recommending, but the injury is expected to sideline Purdy for six months regardless of his decision, a source telling Adam Schefter. Lance is expected to be good to go by OTAs, while Jimmy G is expected to leave in the offseason. So could there be a fresh yet very familiar face starting next season? A non-Niners NFL exec spoke to the Athletics' Mike Sando regarding the Niners quarterback situation, saying, I think they will trade Trey Lance to Tennessee. Then they'll end up with Brady, and Brady will play one year for his home team, and they will have Brock Purdy as the backup. That is the chatter. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Keyshawn, who's more likely to start for the Niners at quarterback next season? If I'm giving huh. you the options of Tom Brady, Brock Purdy, or Trey Lance. It, it'll be Tom Brady. If, if, if I had to bet my right arm on this situation – it's Tom Brady. It makes all the sense in the world. You start off one Molly by saying he's from San Mateo, California, which is right up the road from Santa Clara. He is a, a, a kid that was raised in the area who adored the San Francisco 49ers in, in Joe Montana growing up. He's always eyed the San Francisco 49ers in the right situation. And on top of that, you think about Brock Purdy's injury, six months with the UCL injury on the elbow, whether it's surgery or not, Trey Lance, yes, he'll be ready for OTAs, but do we know anything about Trey Lance? I don't think Trey Lance will be moved on to Tennessee via trade because you still got him on his rookie deal. You still got Brock Purdy on his rookie deal. One of the two, if not both, can be Brady's backup. All you're asking Brady to do is do something very, very similar to what he did in Tampa Bay his first year. You got Christian McCaffrey, a running game. You got Debo Samuel run and a pass game. By the way, Chris McCaffrey can catch the ball out of the backfield. And then you got Ayuk. Maybe you draft another receiver. You still got Jennings. But you got a key at the tight end position, right? Much like Tom Brady's always had his entire career, whether it was in New England or whether it was in Tampa Bay, he had somebody named Gronkowski. Now, Kittle's not too far away from Gronkowski. I think Tom Brady would have liked that. Then you got a defensive football team that's not getting any younger, getting a little bit older, right? You got Warner, you got Ormstead, you got Bosa. You also want to capitalize on a young secondary that's only going to grow. So it's like him leaving New England and going to Tampa. You got a coach who knows how to dial it up. You're not asking Tom Brady to win games. All you're asking him to do is do better than Jimmy Garoppolo, do better than Brock Purdy, which with a left tackle like Trent Williams to protect your blind side, an offensive line that's stacked solid, you got a, a, a match made in heaven. And you know Brady's not going to ask. He was playing. He's not going to ask for a lot of money. He was playing for $25 million in Tampa. So the money's not going to be an issue. You clear the books with Jimmy Garoppolo. You essentially hand that money to Tom Brady with the salary cap going up to $225 million. So they say out there reported that that's around the number it's going to be. So there's no money issues. You don't have to give up draft picks. You traded a haul to get Trey Lance. You're not going to get that same haul back. 
So why would you all of a sudden throw in the towel on Trey Lance instead of letting him learn under Brady? And once Brady walks out in 18, 24 months, so to speak, now you battle it out with a healthy Jimmy, a healthy uh, Brock Purdy and a healthy Trey Lance. That's why I think that this is match made in heaven. John Lynch is not stupid and neither is Kyle Shanahan. Well, none of them are stupid, and your, uh, your, your analysis there was nothing short of brilliant. I get where you're coming from. I was inclined to disagree with you and go with Jock, uh, uh, Brock Purdy, because, but I didn't know that he was going to be out for the next six months until uh, uh, late last night. Uh, that, that was after, you know, uh, obviously I took the position that I took. My answer was going to be Brock Purdy because he was undefeated. Uh, he's young. Uh, he's a part of the system. You, you retain Trey Lance, and if you're going to go out and get anybody, you don't go out and get some dude for one year and Tom Brady, you go out and get some dude like Aaron Rodgers, even though you would have to in order to acquire him, whereas that would not be the case for Tom Brady. Now, Keyshawn, I don't know if you know this, but you know what I mean? Tom Tom Brady has become uh, one of my new buddies. I was actually on the Let's Go podcast with him and Jim Gray. It's out on audio now. It'll be on video later. Tom Brady called me. And wanted to talk to me yesterday, Keyshawn. I couldn't believe it. So, I mean, that, that, that is what happened. Molly, don't be too jealous. Give me, give me one question he asked you. I, I, I want to hear I one ra- question Tom Brady asked you. What did he just talk to me about my career and, and, and how give me one. Give I, me a question. I, I didn't ask well, for a summary. <laughs> one question well, that Tom Brady asked Stephen A. He asked, he asked me. You know, about my work ethic and how is it that I know everything that I know. I have time to watch all of these things. That's what he had. Now, obviously, I don't know as much as him and Keyshawn and all of these other football aficionados that I cover. But, damn it, I ain't supposed to. I'm not one of these ignorant analysts, you know, that, that that's a reporter trying to act like I was in the, on the damn field or in the locker room. No, I didn't play. They played. So I know my place. We just this took a hard so left loved. turn. This is why I'm so, so loved. But the point. Consistent track record of doing that. Dak is not that guy. I wonder if a year from now we're sitting here saying, you know what, a great place for Dak Prescott would be the San Francisco 49ers because that's the way that that offense is built, right? We do it every every single offseason because we know that quarterbacks in that system aren't called on to have to be elite force multipliers, the word that we like to use. But this is on Dak Prescott to figure out where this organization and franchise is going to go uh, to the future. But, G, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to leave you with this, brother. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we always talk about we always talk about Phil Jackson, okay? Yeah. We always talk about how great of a coach he was. Phil Jackson coached Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Shaq, okay? Yeah. There's something to be said for the great <laughs> coaches always being attached to guys that we think are considered elite. Um, when Mike McCarthy won his Super Bowl, Aaron Rodgers was his quarterback playing at the elite level. Bill mm-hmm. Belichick is known as the GOAT in football. Guess who his quarterback was? Mm-hmm. Like, we, we, we have these situations all over the league where we start thinking about guys in a different vein. Dak is not a guy that's going to throw and, and go crazy to lead you to a Super Bowl. He's a guy you can win with. But you got to be in a great system, and you got to have great players, and Dallas don't have that right now. So it's call plays Mike McCarthy, but if you call him plays for dudes that can't hit the side of a born, you ain't going to win the game anyway. That's fair. You know, if you look at the question, very specifically, it's his job on the line. Like, we'll know the answer to that yeah. reasonably soon, right? What the Cowboys do with this contract this offseason will, will give us the answer. He has one year left of guaranteed money. Two years left on the deal, one of guaranteed money. So they have a $49 million cap hit. They would like to get that down. If they extend him as a means of reducing that cap hit, you know they're committed to him long term. If they don't, if they decide to roll with it and just and just deal with that mm-hmm. as the cap, then you'll know that they have questions about him beyond this year and, and that his job is actually on the line. I think it's interesting. He's never not had Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore was on the team Dak's first two years, and he's been on the coaching staff ever since. So it's it's a it's a pretty big change for him. I'm curious to see how it goes. <laughs> hey, look, the, the, it this, is. It, it's massive. Why are you laughing like that? Because the solution to fixing Dak Prescott is throw more money at him. No, it's, no. It's, 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 no, no, it's no, something no, to think it, about. No, no, I, no, I get, know I get if that's what they're going to do. No, I, no, I get They'll tell us their intention. I get what you're saying, but just the idea of it after a guy led the league in interceptions is crazy. But here's the thing I will say. We Kellen do. Moore had a job in two seconds after he got fired. He did. That lets me know that the NFL, the perception is that Kellen Moore wasn't the problem that's down in right. Dallas. That's that's exactly Marcus, right. I literally have 10 seconds. Go. We will know about Dak Prescott based on what Jerry Jones and his staff does around him this year coming into the season. Because so we can sit here and get up and acknowledge that this team ain't good enough to win their own division from a talent standpoint.
Fair enough. All right, we'll leave it there. Obviously, a lot more to be said about it, but there are other veteran quarterbacks that we need to talk about. And as Marcus says, we always tend to put them all in San Francisco. So after the news <laughs> that we got on Brock Purdy yesterday, which if you have.